Hi, Mariah. Thanks for your email and your question. Um, this one is a bit of a monster, especially if you haven't done the U substitution, which is why I asked if you had covered that yet. Um, this is just a really difficult question, and so I think given the fact that you haven't done a U substitution yet, and this one is just such a difficult um, function to work with, that I don't think they would expect you to simplify it. So I'm going to take you, um, you know, sort of as far as I think you would need to go at the level that you guys are at right now. And I'm just going to explain the steps. And I wrote them out, at least the first few steps here, just to make things a little more uh, simple to, to explain and to save some time on the video. So what I did is I started with the original question here. And the first thing I did is I expanded um, what was inside the first square root sign. And I just multiplied out like if it's x squared plus 1 squared, then that means um, x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1 and so on. So that's how I got these things here. Oops is I just multiplied out the binomials that I was given under the square root sign and then I simplified because the 1 and the 1 make 2. So I haven't actually started my derivative yet in those first three steps. It's just simplifying the equation. If you don't simplify it like that, you can still do it, but it makes it a little bit more complicated unless you've done um, that u substitution, which is uh, what I was talking about you'll probably get to that, and so I'll explain what I mean just for, for a quick second about that. I see that in this function, you have this given twice, right? The u squared plus 1 all squared. So what I would do in, in the substitution type of uh, solution for this derivative is probably replace both of those by u. Um, because they're both the same, and I think that's what they're intending here. And then um, it would make a much simpler equation because you would just have um, it would just have u squared plus the square root of one plus u squared, and it would be much easier to deal with because you just don't have <laughs> as many terms and variables flying around. So. Um, that's what I meant by that, and when you get there, which is probably coming soon, you'll understand what I mean a bit better. Okay, so going back to what we've got here, I took the derivative in step four right here. Um, what I did is I wrote them as a square root of um, any variable is always the same as the square as as that variable to the exponent one half. So writing it as to the exponent one half, and then using the power rule, um, you would bring the one half in front and multiply it, and then subtract one from that exponent. And so that's how I ended up with one half times that whole square root thing to the minus one half, because one half minus two halves is negative one half. So that's what I'm doing here. There's the one half exponent multiplied in front, and then I rewrote everything from under the square root sign above, and then I've changed my exponent to minus one half. Now the chain rule part of it is the second part that you see, um, and that's this whole bit right here, which I almost didn't fit on the page because it's so long I had to kind of erase it and squeeze it in a little bit more. So what this is, is when we look at the green line here, everything in this bracket has its own derivative, and so chain rule tells us to multiply everything by the derivative of what's in the bracket. And so I started with x to the fourth, this guy, and I ended up with 4x cubed using the power rule. And then I did the 2x squared and that gave me 4x. And the 1 has a derivative of 0, so I left it out. And then this guy here, this second square root, it can be written as x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 2 all to the exponent 1 half. 
So that's why I've got 1 half in front times that expression and then to the minus 1 half. And then guess what? There's another chain rule in the brackets because I can still take more derivatives. I can take the derivative of x to the fourth, which is the 4x cubed, and 2x squared, which is the 4x. So that derivative is pretty tough at where you guys are at in the course right now. I'm not sure if your professor meant to assign this question. Um, the only part that you have to do next is simplify this and rewrite it in a way that makes a little bit more sense. So I did the first step of the simplifying for you and I think I would recommend that you stop there because it just gets into really complicated working, um, you know, working with the polynomials type of math. It's not calculus, it's just working with the polynomials and manipulating all these variables. So I've done the first step for you. Um, the 1 half, there's the 1, there's the 2. So part of it's in the numerator, part's in the denominator. And then in the bottom, because this whole expression is to a negative exponent, I have to put it all down in the denominator. So in this square root sign, all of this stuff would get rewritten, but it's in the denominator because negative one-half means a square root in the denominator and not in the numerator, and so I have to write all this down here. And then over on the right-hand side, this whole chain rule bracket that we ended up with, um, I've got 4x cubed plus 4x, and for the second part, for the two terms that are multiplied here, if I write 4x cubed plus 4x as factored form, then it looks like this on top. And again, because I've got a negative exponent on this part of the derivative, it means that it's going to go in the denominator as a square root, and the x fourth, 2x squared, and 2 matches this exactly. And then the 1 over 2 means that the 2 also goes in the denominator here. So all I did was some simple dividing. Now 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. And this term, the first term will stay the same. This term now can become this. All over the square root of... And then over here, of course, we still had the other part that we just didn't write yet because it's a lot of writing. You're going to use a lot of paper on this question. And I'll let you fill in just all of this stuff down here, okay? And then I would stop because it's just, it, like I said, it's just manipulating variables and all that stuff. It's really difficult, and I don't know how worthwhile it is. Um, you could factor a 2 out of all three terms here, and then you could cross that out with this 2 here. And then I don't think I would go any further than that, because you're going to be, end up multiplying square roots and doing some weird stuff, and it's just going to get too complicated for your course. So I hope that helps. Um, I was going to also mention that online there is a couple of great online programs, uh, websites that you can go to. Uh, Symbolu, I'm not doing that right, am I? Symbolu, Symbol Lab. Symbolab.com is a really great one, and it lets you take derivatives. You just be careful how you type them in. Make sure you use lots of brackets to make sure that it's reading it correctly. You can type any function in there. It'll take the derivative for you. And soon when you learn integrals and antiderivatives, it will do those too. So it's a great way to check to see if you did it right. And it will also show you your steps. And so you know that you, um, if you get stuck, you can go back and check and see where you went wrong. So you can give that a try also. So I hope that helps, and I'm sorry the video is so long.